Let's open our Bibles to John chapter 6 and verse 63. John chapter 6 and verse 63. We'll look at verses 63 through 69. We're, going to, we're continuing our series entitled, God Wants You Whole. The subtitle of today's message is, Reboot Your Belief System. Question for all of us, if God wants us whole, and he does, why are there so many people sick, stressed out, full of anxiety, worried, and full of fear? What is wrong? We have to receive what's been given. If it's not received, it doesn't change God's desire for his people to be whole. The enemy of your soul wants to hurt you so bad that it destroys your belief system. I submit to you today that every setback and every distraction, every attack on your life is an attack to believe, to, to, to shatter your belief system. And you and I have to determine in our hearts that, that no matter what goes on, that we're going to be believers. Believers believe, true or not true. So when the attacks come, when the enemy gives you his best shot, you set yourself in the mindset that I don't have a number. You know, sometimes we'll say things like, you know, if, if, if this happens to me one last time, I just don't know if I can make it. The devil loves to hear stuff like that. When you determine that I'm rooted and grounded in love and I'm standing on the word of God no matter what goes on, the devil don't know what to do. When he attacks you, you stand strong. You keep moving forward no matter what. Amen. Believers believe. Do I have any believers in here? Yes. It is so important that you and I set our face like flint to, to just be, to be dogmatic about holding on to the promises of the word of God. John chapter 6 and verse 63 says, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Verse 64 says, but there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who would betray him. Man, I wish I had those superpowers. And he said, therefore, I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Now, we have to keep in mind that this was a part of the 70s. So these were the ones that went out two by two and seen Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. They seen blind eyes open. They seen the miraculous flowing. And yet, they went back. They couldn't comprehend what Jesus was saying in their mind, so they went back. They limited their future to their understanding. Family, whatever you do, do not live captive to your own understanding. God has a plan that is perfect, that is set out for you to win and be victorious when it's all said and done. Amen. It goes on to say in verse 66, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then Jesus said to the 12, do you also want to go away? But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Peter got it right, family. Peter was like, I hear what you're saying, Lord, but where are we going to go? Who are we going to go to? There is only one place that we can find the holder of eternal life. 
Well, don't ever allow the attacks of the enemy to shake your faith to such a degree that you start doubting your creator, your maker. God is good, and he's full of goodness. Come to believe and knowing is a process. That didn't just happen. They, Peter said, we have come to believe and to know. That's a process. That takes time. And when you hang on, when you stay the course, there's going to come a time when you not only believe, but you know God has your back. You know God is good. You know God is going to pull you through. You may not have an understanding, but you know God is going to see this through also. Let's go to Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 through 2. This process is worth doing. Don't turn back. We may get knocked down. You get back up. It's worth it. Because you're partnering with Christ, the anointed one, and his anointing. You're partnering with the one that holds it all in his hands. You're partnering with the one that is the author and the finisher of your faith. He knows the beginning from the end. His will for your life is good. Your belief system makes all the difference. Whether or not you continue to receive determines what you, how you stand. It is, it's so important, family, that your, 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 your belief system, here's the definition of belief system. Your belief system is the reference point by which you judge all things. It is the heart of your decision-making process. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body, who? That, that you present, who presents your body? Can I do it for you? Can you do it for me? That you present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2 says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove, have evidence of what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The reason God tells us to renew our minds is because our belief system must be programmed. You know, especially if you have a setback, if your, your head gets banged against the wall, you have to reprogram your belief system to say God is a good God. You have, to, you have to be mindful of God is not trying to teach me something. God is not trying to hurt me. God is not using the enemy to punish me to get my attention. That's not the God we serve. God loves you so much. He's trying to set you free from the pressures of this world. He's trying to set you free from the stress, the worry, the fear, and the anxiety. In order to be free, we must align ourselves to the belief system of the word of God. Let's go to John chapter 8 and verse 31. John chapter 8 and verse, where are you guys going? John chapter, eight, eight, John chapter 8 and verse 31. In order to be free, we have to choose how we think. We have to reboot our belief system. John chapter 8, verse 31 says, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. To have a renewed mind is to function according to a belief system that lines up with the word of God. The most potent impact on your own belief system is your personal experiences. And that's why we have, to, we have to rethink the way we're talking to God, talking about God, the way we're, we're, the way we're receiving things. The most precious moment in time 
is when you are going through an attack, the very first words that you release are crucial. It is so important to know and understand that because when there's trauma, when there's shock, when there's intense emotional experiences, it's a great time for the enemy to slip in some thoughts, some word pictures that try to lay hold of our belief system. We get to know God's goodness and mercy and grace by continuing. John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32 tells us to continue because only continuing takes us past belief into knowing. It's important that we continue to fight the good fight of faith. It's important that we continue to hold our course no matter the attack. Let's look at Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13. I'm going to look in the Passion translation for this one. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13, 13 and 14, it says, I do not depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus. I forget all of the past and I fasten my heart to the future instead. I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus. You know, the anointing of Jesus is absolutely tangible. The anointing of Jesus is available for you and I to grab hold and be free from whatever the enemy is attacking us in. It doesn't matter what the area is. It doesn't matter how long it's been going on. The anointing is more than enough to destroy the yoke, to shatter the yokes to where they're unrecognizable in your life again. And if we don't expect that, if we don't set our heart to receive that, then we are hindering what God wants to do in our lives. And what I'm challenging you to do right now is set your expectation higher than you've ever had them before. It doesn't matter what is going on in your life. You believe that God is going to take care of it now. Believe that God is going to take care of it right. It doesn't matter if it's a sickness that's been going on for years, if it's a, an addiction, if it's, if it's a, a trap, a cycle you've been stuck. It doesn't matter. The anointing is not only available, but God is waiting for you to say, yes, I want to be free. Yes, I desire to be beyond this. You know, sickness is trespassing. Your body, if you've said yes to Jesus, raise your hand if you said yes to Jesus. If you have said yes to Jesus, sickness and disease is trespassing. Your body is now the temple of the Holy Spirit. And anything foreign doesn't have a right to remain in your body. There is no flu season for the kingdom of God. Sickness and disease don't exist in the kingdom of God. You're not from this place. You are an ambassador. You, you are here on assignment. Your home is in heaven. And you still get the benefits of all that heaven has. And family, there's no sickness in heaven. Don't get familiar with sickness and disease hanging around you. No one understand. See, we have to shift our mind. This is wrong. This is a violation. This is out of order. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 1. And verse 1, we have to stand on the word of God until it gets into our hearts to such a degree that we are offended that the enemy tries to attack our bodies. It's not right. No one in here would allow some stranger to walk in your house and start picking up things and taking them out of your house. Nobody would sit still and allow that to happen. 
You would do something about it. Well, your body is sacred. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Don't allow the enemy to trespass on your temple. 2 Peter 1, 1 through 4 says, Simon Peter, a bondservant, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have received a faith of the same kind as ours, by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the, what's it say? In the knowledge of God. And of our, and of Jesus, our Lord. Seeing that his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. For by these he has granted to us his precious, magnificent promises so that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. We're not subject to the things of this world. Your belief system controls your life. It's important that we pay attention to what we really believe. What do you really believe? You have a default mode that will automatically block things that are contrary to what you believe. And that's why it's so important. Family, if you don't, if you don't really believe healing is for you, you will block it automatically. If you don't really believe you're supposed to prosper and have things, you'll block it automatically. If you don't really believe you deserve to have a good man in your life or a good woman in your life, if you don't really believe you deserve to have success, your belief system will hinder you from receiving what God sent Jesus to die for on your behalf. It's important we pay attention to what our belief system really is. Your belief system is the deep-seated beliefs that you have about your life, about who you are, and what is possible for you. Your belief system, right or wrong, is your identity. Oh, it's so important to get to this place. Because if you don't know where you are, it doesn't matter where you want to go. You don't know what direction to start out in. We always have to locate ourselves in order to get to our destination. It's important that we know that, and that's what we're doing today. We're, I, my, I'm encouraging you to have an honest conversation with your Lord and Savior and, and let him know what you believe. And then he's so good. We have the ability to say, Lord, help my unbelief. If, we, if we're falling short in any area, we can go to our Lord who is so good and ask for help. He can, he can fill the gaps that we have in our lives. But if you don't locate yourself first, you're going in the wrong direction. You know, my vision is to see people believe and know God's true nature and walk in freedom. You know, and I see it. I see it. Every time these doors open, I, I, I see people coming in here getting an understanding of God's word, believing God's word, knowing God for themselves, and being completely transformed. I'm convinced that if people really knew God, they would serve him with all they had. I, I know, I know in my knower that if people really understood what God had for them, they would not leave without it ever again. You know, I used to work with a guy, and uh, he came in one morning, and he was trying to get himself together. He, he had a, a, a client that was coming in, and he just couldn't gather his thoughts. And he said, I got to go. And I was like, man, what's going on? And he said, oh, could, could you cover me? So I covered his client, and he said, man, I ran out of medication, and I was trying to get off of it, and I found out what they prescribed me, I can't get off on my own. The doctor has to wean me off because I'll start having seizures. And I thought, 
My God. So he stayed home until the pharmacy opened and then doubled up on the medication in order to function. And I remember this same individual talking to me about how church was a crutch. God was a crutch. And he didn't need that. And I'm thinking, dear God, there are so many people who are hurt and lost, who are depending on pharmaceuticals to function. He couldn't even do his job. And his friend, who was a doctor, prescribed this medication that were known for causing seizures. It just, it broke, it broke my heart that how many of you know that there is somebody in your life that needs the anointing that's on your life? We can't allow. God wants us whole. God wants us to function in wholeness so we can start spilling over unto others. God wants you to be so full of his spirit, his power, and his anointing that when you go lay hands on co-workers, they're, they're delivered instantly. That's the purpose of the God that's on the inside of you. That's the purpose of the anointing. You house the anointing to make a difference in your workplace, in your business, in your ministry. It's so important that we begin to function that way because we have been redeemed family from the curse, from the things that come against us. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4. You know, deception is blinding. You know, this individual that I used to work out with, I used to work with, he didn't have a clue. And he didn't want to hear what I had to say. Of course, I was constantly in his ear. Not in a pestering way, but just, a, just a, a subtle reminder. But deception is blinding. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says, In whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. So let me ask you this. Is there a reason for you and I to believe? Look at the contrast. If we don't believe... To not believe is to be blinded. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine unto them. Your belief system includes your redemption. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13. Come there with me. We'll look at verses 13 and 14. Your belief system needs to include your redemption. What am I saying? You need to know for certain that you have been redeemed from the curse. You need to know without any shadow of a doubt that you are redeemed from the curse. It says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that he might receive the promise of the Spirit. How? Is faith important? The law brought a blessing if you obey or it brought a curse if you disobeyed. If you disobeyed any failure, any failure to obey the law brought on the curse. Therefore, everyone was under the curse. Everyone had sinned and fallen short. But praise God, Christ has redeemed us. Everyone that said yes to Jesus Christ we are redeemed. 
Since this blessing now comes through faith in Christ, not by desert, observing Jewish law, anyone, say anyone, anyone, who trusts in Christ now receives God's blessing. Amen. Verse 14. That blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. We have to settle in our hearts that if you are blessed, you said yes, raise your hand. You said yes to Jesus? Yes. You are blessed. Look at your neighbor and say, you are blessed. blessed. Now look at them and say, you cannot be cursed. We can't be cursed and blessed at the same time. A curse is opposite of the blessing. Christ removed the curse of the broken law by bearing its penalty on the cross. The law's curse and punishment was taken care of by Jesus as our substitute so that the blessing of Abraham can be ours. You and I now have the blessing of Abraham. What does it mean to be redeemed? First and foremost, it means to receive the blessing of Abraham. It means to be bought out from the enemy's control. That means anything that the enemy is trying to do to you or through you, you don't have to be in bondage to. That is so important to know and understand. You do not, you are not subject to the enemy's attacks. To be set free and to become the recipient of light and life. This is what it means to be redeemed. Let's go to John chapter 10 and verse 10. John chapter 10 and verse 10. Where are you guys going? John 10, 10. The thief does not come except. Why does the thief come? Steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. Jesus came to give you and I abundant life blessings, not curses. The thief comes for one reason, to kill, steal, and destroy. How? Tragedy, sickness, disease, stress, fear, and anxiety. To be, to be redeemed is to benefit from God's system. How? By receiving truth through the word of God, by being quickened by his Holy Spirit, by operating and living in abundance to be redeemed is to function under the grace of God the grace of God will not only keep you if you miss the mark the grace of God will keep you from missing the mark let's go to Romans chapter 8 verse 28 Romans 8 and 28 And we know that all things work together for good to those who, what's it say? Love God. Love God to those who are called according to his purpose. Love God, his purpose. God wants you whole. His desire is for all things to work out for you. Here's the question. Do you love him? Yes. Are you doing what you're doing according to his purpose. Is your life linked to his purpose? Now let's pause for a second. It's easy to quote that scripture. You know, it's all good. It's all good, Pastor. All things work to my, to my good. I, lo I love the Lord. I know what I'm supposed to do, but um, God knows my heart. <laughs> Let me see. Does it, say, does it say anything about God knowing your heart? No, nope, no. Nope. It says, according to his purpose. 
I submit to you, this scripture applies to those who not only love God, but those who have attached their life to his purpose. That's important to know because we could be standing on the scripture, be disappointed and say, God let me down. We could be lying on God. That scripture didn't work for me. Well, let's look at the scripture according to his purpose, not your purpose, not what your mom told you you're supposed to do, your husband told you you're supposed to do, your, your neighbor, not what your sister or brother are doing. Your purpose is your purpose. God is not going to anoint you to be your neighbor. Yes and amen. God wants us whole. His desire is for all things to work out according to his plan. But we always have a choice of how we link our lives. We always have a choice. God did not create puppets or robots. Every one of us are free real agents. Why are we redeemed from the curse? First and foremost, so we can be effective witnesses. We need to be free. We need to be, we need, we need to be released from the grips of the enemy so we can be effective. You know, it's free people that free other people. Amen? Amen. We need to be redeemed from the curse. Mark chapter 16 and verse 15 says, And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. We need to be free so we can help others become free. Let's go to Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. Romans 8, 1 and 2. Hallelujah. Anybody expecting? Absolutely. Thank you, Jesus. Romans 8, 1 and 2. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Do you see the, the contrast? For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. It's the Spirit of life that allows you and I to be effective witnesses. Sickness, stress, fear, worry, strife, anxiety is a part of the law of sin and death. That's the death cycle. You and I have been made a part of the life cycle. You're free from the law of sin and death to impact the world around you. However, you can't impact the world around you until you impact the world on the inside of you. It always starts with you and I on the inside. We have to be bold enough to say, Lord, I need help. We have to be honest enough to say, Lord, this is where I'm at. This is where I'm really at, Lord. How do I get to the destination that you set up for me? That's why our belief system has to be right. You were redeemed from the curse so you can go about doing good things like Jesus did in Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. It says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. I submit to you this morning that God is with you and you too can go about doing good and healing all. Stress, anxiety, fear, worry are some of the ways the devil oppresses people. Your redemption is not just for you. It starts with you, but it always goes beyond you. It always trickles down. Let's go to Genesis chapter 39. Let's look at Brother Joe. Sister Phyllis, the Lord just wanted me to say that he loves you.
Genesis 39, 1 through 5 says, Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an Egyptian officer of Pharaoh's, of Pharaoh, the captain of the bodyguard, bought him from the Ishmaelites, who had taken him down there. Now, verse 2, underline this or highlight it. The Lord was with Joseph. And because of that, Joseph became a successful man. You guys see that? And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Now his master saw the Lord was with him. Now, how did, how did, I, I want to know, how did Potiphar see that the Lord was with him? What was going on in Joseph's life that Potiphar saw? There was evidence in Joseph's life that Potiphar identified that the Lord was with him. Dear God, let that be said of us. Let your coworker look over and say, you know, the, the Lord is with you. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Now his master saw the Lord was with him and how the Lord caused all that he did to prosper in his hands. Is that anybody else's prayer? Verse 4 says, so Joseph found favor in his sight and became his personal servant and made him overseer, overseer over his house and all that he owned. He put him in charge. It became about that from the time he made him overseer in his house and over all that he owned, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house on account of who? Grab hold of that. The anointing that's on your life will cause your boss to prosper, your employees to prosper, your spouse to prosper. The anointing of God is not just for you and you alone. It should spill over. There should be an overflow, and, and people should be affected by the God on the inside of you. Your redemption comes with success, prosperity, favor, and blessing. How can I say that boldly? I can stand flat-footed and say that because God is with you. Family, God wants you whole physically, mentally, spiritually, financially. God wants, God's desire for your life is to be whole, to be complete. That's what 1 Thessalonians 5.23 talks about. How do we reboot? How do we reboot our belief system? Number one, you guys have your notes? Number one says what? Align my belief system with the word of God. And that means if there's something that I'm believing that is contrary to what I see in the word, I'm going to change myself. I'm not going to try to make the word fit my life. I'm going to make my life fit within the word. That's what this ministry was founded on, empowering families with the word for life. I believe that the seed, the incorruptible seed of the word of God is going into your hearts right now. Your hearts are pliable, and I, and I, and I, and I sense the anointing ministering to, to some of you. That seed is going into your heart and will absolutely bring forth a harvest. That's what the Word of God does. How many of you can raise your hand and say you've been changed since you've been sitting and hearing the Word of God? How many of you, I know I, know, I, know I can uh, without, without hesitation. If I could raise my hands and my feet, I would. If I, if I, without doubt, the Word does that. We have to renew our minds according to Romans 12, 1 and 2. Number two says what? Give in to God, submit whatever God, I, I don't want to, if, 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 I don't want to say, if, I would like to never ever again hear somebody say, I've been running from God for years. I've been resisting the call. I've been resisting. I know God has been calling me to do fill in the blank, but I've been resisting. That's twisted. 
Submit to God. Resist the devil. You know, I've never, I shouldn't say never, but it's rare. I hear people say, I've been resisting the devil. The devil's been trying to call me to do stuff, and I've been just, and I've been just, I've been just, I've been just saying no. It's twisted. We got to get that, we got to get that in order. We got to get that right. James 4, 7 says, therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The word submit means to yield or surrender oneself to. The word resist means to withstand and actively fight against. Number three says what? Spend time getting to know him. Second Peter 1, 1 through 4 uh, is, is, we read that earlier and that's what that's all about. Spend time. We always get, and if every friend that you have, every relative that you have that you're close with, that happened as a result of you spending time with them. Spending time. When we spend time, we grow close to an individual. When we spend time with our Lord and Savior, we, go, we grow close with him. Amen? Amen. Number four. Operate in love. This is a challenging one because you know you don't know what they did to me. You know you don't you don't know you don't know how long I've been putting up with it. You don't you don't understand. I would, but I I remember I I got a I had a vision of unforgiveness, and there was a there was a chair, and there was a bright light, and there was a a a, a, a black sheet over. Um, over the, the person's head. And, um, and I just had an image of just throwing, throwing stones. And, you know, it's just hateful, just unforgiveness, just, you know, like all this time just, just venting. And um, just stone after stone, just beating this individual. And what God showed me was when the sheet was lifted, it was me. I was the one that was in unforgiveness. I was the one throwing the rocks, but I was the only one being hurt, holding on to unforgiveness. Unforgiveness never hurts the person that you're not forgiven. Unforgiveness opens a door for the enemy, and it hurts you. And you alone, let go. It doesn't matter what it was. And I know that's easier said than done. I'm not making light of uh, different challenges and, and, and real life things that people have gone through. But I do know your freedom is on the other side of your forgiveness. Where are we at? Number five says what? Guard your heart. Whatever you do, guard your heart. Uh, Proverbs chapter 4, 23 is the proof text to that point. It says, keep and guard your heart with all vigilance and above all that you guard, for out of it flow the springs of life. There's a translation that says the issues of life. So your, your, your life comes out of your heart. What's going on in your world has one source, and that's your heart. It comes out of your heart. Number six. Choose life. Choose to live in him. Let him have his way. Allow him to make you whole. Allow him to, to cause wholeness to come into your life. Number seven, keep hearing truth. Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hearing by, and freedom has one opportunity to interrupt our current state of being. And that's by way of the word of God. If you desire to be free from no matter what it is, the entry point to your freedom is the word of God, the truth of the word of God. 
And when you and I begin to submit to God and just yield, let stuff go, press forward, believe God. Be because the fact that you have breath means you have hope. Amen. You are here to accomplish a purpose and an assignment. And you have to know that. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we know that you are present, willing, ready, and available to deliver and heal all. Meli kransi veke si pro sibra makan de klese tiso rorombre veke tiola sundre. Evi vene koma na si kresi robo. O la ranangra si ere si o no bakrasit esi krosa tala mane vere visto. I desire to heal my people of all hurts. Renew your mind. Learn of me. And you will see my goodness unfold and overtake you. You'll see. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God.